Thank you for joining me for this emergent feature focus on intelligent inventory management. I am looking forward to showcasing how Ansible Automation Platform can decrease your inventory management headaches and increase security, reliability, and efficiency within your organization. But first, let's discuss a few of the risks of managing your inventory the ancient way. So as your environment grows to meet the needs of your organization, it becomes increasingly complex to maintain visibility over that infrastructure. Perhaps your technical resources are maintaining manual documentation, but in all likelihood you have orphan servers sitting out there leading to unnecessary compute costs. And whether they're needed or not, they're missing patches and updates that they need leading to potential security backdoors. And your admins might know about those machines, but they're also probably not sharing that knowledge across your organization, leading to shadow IT practices and uncontrolled system access. Perhaps you're failing licensing and security audits. So what we're really talking about here is changing the dynamic. Rather than reactive, we want to lead to proactive emergency response and maintenance. Instead of wasting resources on manual tasks, we want to redirect that investment to innovation. As organizations adopt automation as a crucial part of their data modernization efforts, you may have heard of Ansible. But what is it and what does it mean for your organization? Well, in short, Ansible Automation Platform is the enterprise framework for infrastructure automation. It eases the burden of provisioning servers and VMs across bare metal and hybrid cloud. It speeds configuration management, application deployment, and enables CI CD pipeline development. It will manage your security and network devices. It handles orchestration of virtualization, clustering, and network configuration. But most importantly, it unifies your DevOps under one standard automation language. There are two main aspects to Ansible Automation Platform. Underneath sits Ansible Engine, which is responsible for things such as provisioning, configuration updates, maybe obtaining information from a remote server. On top sits Ansible Tower, which is the front-end orchestration tool for infrastructure management. It conducts complex operations such as updates across hundreds or even thousands of nodes simultaneously. It will empower your IT and development teams to be able to handle self-service updates and provisioning. It includes those features required for the enterprise, such as role-based access control, auditability, monitoring, and logging. It will plug into your existing identity management solution and also offers the ability to have a fully featured API that plugs into tools such as ServiceNow to automate things like remediation, event management, or incident response. Now that I've discussed some of the core capabilities of Ansible Automation Platform, I'd like to show you how you can solve the sprawl using Ansible Tower. And it does so with two powerful features. The first of those is Dynamic Inventory, which handles ingestion and tagging. You can consolidate cloud, VMware, ServiceNow configuration, management database information, and more into a single source. It has the ability to filter inventory based on host information, or you can create customizable tags to more quickly locate a service or asset. You can then repurpose that host information and those tags into reusable variables. You can schedule or manually refresh inventory if you so choose, or have inventory automatically refresh before a task begins. And adding on to that power is Smart Inventory, which offers you swift visibility through an intelligent inventory organization based on filters, so you can find something based on its function, not where it's located. To replicate something similar to what you might see in a production environment, we have constructed a simple two-zone, two-tier VPC for this demonstration. We will be provisioning VMs in two creatively named inventory groups, a web front-end and a database back-end. And though these are Linux VMs, Ansible Tower is fully capable of managing your Windows, network, and also security hardware. And it will unify all of your bare metal, virtualized, and cloud instances together into a single interface. Alrighty, so let's log into Ansible Tower. And when you first log in, you are presented with this very useful and functional dashboard that summarizes recent job runs, the status, as well as recently used job templates. Now, we've already created a project for this demonstration today. I've named it Inventory Management Video. 
And we are utilizing a source code management system to actually get all of what Ansible calls the playbooks, which execute those tasks. Um, they are contained within my own personal GitHub account to enable that CI CD workflow. Of course, you could utilize your own internal source code management system um, if you so choose. So I've already got some job templates that are going to be managing those aspects of uh, creating the VMs today uh, that will enable us to demonstrate that dynamic inventory. So now we're going to spin up some VMs so we can demonstrate the dynamic and smart inventory capabilities of Ansible Tower. And I will launch this job template, which will be executing the tasks by clicking this rocket ship icon. But before we get to the point to where we are actually creating these VMs, we are presented with this survey. And a survey is an optional feature within Ansible Tower that allows you to set up custom options that be, can be chosen at runtime. So the IT operations, your developers who may be interacting with this system have more extensibility and more flexibility to be able to choose and modify things at runtime, but you're offering it to them in a controlled way. So what we have done in this particular demonstration is set up some custom variables to choose where these, uh, where these VMs are gonna be created, what inventory they're gonna be sitting in, and we also get to choose what tier within the virtual private cloud that these VMs are going to be setting in or sitting in. In addition, we have chosen to allow an instance role. So we can choose whether it's a web server or a DB server in this particular case. And we're going to use that to more easily identify these instances later on. So with that, let's go ahead and get started in creating our cluster. All right, we have successfully created our first two VMs. As you can see from the task, uh, the job task output here, um, all very verbose. We have a VM in the public A and the public B virtual private cloud, and we have the output of the IP addresses, uh, the internal IP addresses that we're going to be using to um, access these uh, through Tower. Um, they will be in the inventory and Tower will be able to fully manage these particular instances. Now you can see when I clicked on uh, the output of that uh, particular um, playbook run, we get a lot more information and much of this um, is reusable um, as variables that you can then uh, reuse in other tasks if you so choose. As you can see here, we have some extra variables over here in the uh, lower left-hand side. Uh, the, these are basically what was configured during that survey um, selection. Um, we can see that it then populates these selections that we made uh, as Alderon, Alderon inventory, the public tier, as well as the web server instance role. So with that, let's go ahead and create the rest of our VMs in Alderon and Corellia. The jobs section on the left hand menu will take us into the status of all of our recently run job templates. So we can see exactly what the outcome was, um, whether they are currently running, and if they failed, what might have failed within them. So we saw that information in real time. We can also click through after the fact to find out the exact output and what happened. And remember, all of this can be logged and monitored. You can set up notifications as you wish. If something worked well or didn't work well, it is all fully configurable within Ansible Tower. 
Now that I have successfully created the VMs in the Alderaan and the Corellia inventory, I'm going to return to my inventory management project and register all of these VMs on the Red Hat network. And you'll notice here I am selecting a key to be used um, to register with the Red Hat network. It is important to note that all credentials within Ansible Tower are stored securely. So you enter them once and then they are encrypted. So you might have technical resources or developers that may wish to use a certain feature that you have allowed them to use, but they're not going to be able to see those credentials. You're keeping all of that information close to the chest. Yet another enterprise grade feature that is a default part of Ansible Tower. Now let's inspect our newly created inventory. If I click inventory on the left hand side of the menu, you can see right at the top, we have our Alderaan and our Corellia inventory. When you first set up inventories, you decide a source from where that host or where that inventory comes from. And whether, those, uh, whether that source is located in the cloud or in a virtualized environment or in bare metal, you can configure that um, to, to connect to any of those inventory sources via that sources section. In our particular case, we are connecting to AWS. And you might wonder how it's possible that it can pull all of this inventory from a single AWS inventory source or a single AWS account. But it knows to put certain hosts within Alderaan and certain hosts within Corellia. Well, in our particular case, we have chosen to filter out particular instances. And we did that through these source variables that are configured here below. So if we can find it here, um, we'll be able to see that there is a particular filter on instant states that are running, as well as inventory that is tagged specifically with the Alderaan tab, and the same thing for Corellia. So with that configuration option set there, it automatically places any hosts that are created with those particular tags and, or with that particular tag and that particular instant state of running into the Alderaan AWS inventory. Now we will return back to our main AWS inventory for Alderaan and have a look at the hosts that have been ingested into our inventory. And here we can see four hosts. Um, they just have the private DNS name specified here. Otherwise, not really any other information about them, which we don't really need to know in this particular um, section. Um, well, we're going to get the information we need uh, to be able to quickly identify these hosts by purpose, um, what they're doing, what their stage is. Um, we're gonna find all of that information within this groups tab. This contains attributes of the inventory as well as optional custom tags. Default attributes might be, for example, region or zone, and groups can be nested within each other. For instance, the region group attribute may have US East 1 nested within it. We are focused on custom tags to clarify the group's concept within Tower. However, you can just as easily filter your inventory using the existing ingested attributes without the need to create custom tags. So note that I did mention that these are customized tags, and these tags are actually created at runtime um, when this actual job task runs, and we have configured those particular tags to be specified um, within the actual Ansible playbook. So we chose those tags based on our own hypothetical best purposes, and you would be doing the same within your scenario. Uh, we can actually be able to filter hosts based on those specific tags. And you'll find uh, that um, there are search features all throughout Ansible Tower to be able to locate things more quickly. And in fact, we can actually just click on any one of these individual tags to find out what hosts are within them. So if I need to find out all of my RHEL servers, I'm going to be able to click that platform RHEL tag that I created click the hosts and find out all of the rel hosts that are running with that particular tag. Now, because we are in Alderaan, we are only seeing the hosts that are tagged within Alderaan. 
I can go back and select the web server role and find those hosts that are within Alderaan. However, what if I want to see all of my rel hosts within all of my inventory? Well, that's where smart inventory comes into play. There are seemingly endless possibilities for organizing your inventory dynamically within Ansible Tower. However, there are always going to be those situations where something catches on fire. Maybe there's an application that's not working as expected. Perhaps you need to apply an emergency patch to respond to a security incident. That's where the power of group tagging comes in to play. Here in our scenario, we've created that DB server role. So that's going to allow us to be able to search across our entire infrastructure immediately to find all of those database servers. And here we can see so conveniently those four virtual machines that we have created that represent our hypothetical inventory here within Alderaan and Corellia. However, this includes both zone A and zone B of our VPC. Let's say that we know that there's a problem with some database servers specifically within zone A and we wanna search just within that zone. Well, we can further drill down into this inventory by searching for that zone A. It adds it as an additional tag. And then we can see just those database servers that happen to exist within zone A of our virtual private cloud. Now let's say that this is a search that you often need to perform. You need to look and, and be able to look into this inventory quickly and know exactly what's going on with those specific set of hosts with these specific tags. Well, through the power of smart inventory, you have that ability to create what's essentially like a virtual inventory within Tower. It doesn't replicate them as nodes. It basically creates a, a way for you to be able to quickly locate that inventory based on this tag filtering. And in fact, we can create that inventory immediately based off of this current search just by clicking that smart inventory button. And we're gonna do just that. So we're looking for all DB servers in zone A. I'm just gonna name it that because it's simple. Select the organization that we belong to and I'm going to click save. And just like that, we have created a new way to organize inventory within Ansible Tower. We hope this has given you some ideas and shown you some excellent ways that Ansible Tower can enable your, your automation initiatives and really begin to empower your organization to not only work together, but also work more efficiently. It was my pleasure to have this opportunity to demonstrate some of the capabilities of Ansible Automation Platform. Please reach out if you would like to learn more about Ansible or if you would like to discuss how we can help with your data modernization initiatives. We are proud to be a Red Hat Elite Certified Partner and we work closely with Red Hat to build, optimize, and deliver complete solutions. Thank you.